Ignition timing is controlled by a governor advancer according to the engine speed and by a vacuum advancer according to the load on the engine. The governor advancer controls the ignition advance angle by rotating the signal rotor slightly relative to the distributor shaft. And the vacuum answer controls the advance angle by changing the position of the pickup coil. Let's take a closer look. The governor advancer consists of a cam plate, flyweights, and governor springs. The cam plate rotates together with the distributor shaft. Two flyweights rotate on the cam plate with support pins as their centers. At low engine speeds, the flyweights are kept closed by the force of the springs. As the engine speed increases, the flyweights are gradually thrown outward by centrifugal force. Then the cam plate moves the signal rotor in the direction of rotation until the centrifugal force balances the cam spring force. This operation controls the advance angle. This graph shows the relationship between the degree of the advance angle and the engine speed. Next, let's take a look at a vacuum advancer. Here, diaphragm is connected to the pickup coil with an advancer rod. This diaphragm responds to the vacuum in the intake manifold. When the load on the engine is light, the throttle valve opening is also small, so a vacuum is generated at the diaphragm pulling the advancer rod, moving the signal rotor to the left, and advancing ignition timing. When the engine load is heavy, the accelerator pedal is depressed, the throttle valve opens wide, and the vacuum in the intake manifold decreases. Then the spring pulls the diaphragm to the right. As a result, depending on the engine load, the pickup coil moves in the same direction as the signal rose rotation, retarding ignition timing. In automobiles, various types of vacuum advancers are used according to engine specifications. This graph shows the relationship between the intake manifold vacuum and the advance angle. 